Let's see all the breakfast and plus CV Africa. We look at the second conversation, a request asking for an extension of party primaries by political parties. Now, the 18 registered political parties in Nigeria under the ages of Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, have appealed to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to extend deadline for conduct of primary elections. But INEC is insisting that June the 3rd is the target for parties to conduct primaries and pick candidates for their 2023 general election and that will not change. Now, reason for the request is that the Salah holiday, also the forthcoming Ikiti and Oshun state governorship elections and screening of unprecedented large number of aspirants were issues that could hamper timely and strict compliance with the timetable. He maintained that the time allotted by INEC for the conduct of the primaries was too short. In the view of efforts required by political parties for screening and selection of quality flag bearers, noting that the request for slight modification in INEC schedule of activities is not without precedent. Sani uh, said some of the constraining developments were not considered and factored by INEC while he drew its schedule of activities. Earlier, INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu uh, reminded the political parties of necessity of strict compliance with timeline for party primaries. This morning, we have Festus Okoye, who's the National Commissioner Information and Voter Education, INEC. Mr. Festus Okoye, it's good to have you join us this morning. We also have Okunabon Kataria, a public affairs analyst, joining the conversation. Gentlemen, it's good to have you join us on The Breakfast. Good morning, Messi, Justin, and Nigeria. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Good morning. All right. So, so I'll start off with uh, Festus ok Okoye. Can you hear us, please? Yes, I, I can hear you, yes. So um, you, you see, the reason why political parties are asking for an extension is that the time allotted them is very short. And INEC did not factor other issues while they were preparing the timetable. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, we factored all issues uh, in preparing our timetable and schedule of activities. Um, if, if you recall, uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, signed the Electoral Act 2022 into law on the 25th day of uh, February uh, 2022. And then this following day, on the 26th day of February uh, 2022, uh, the Commission released this timetable and schedule of activities for the conduct of uh, the 2023 general election. Now, nobody appealed to us in relation to this timetable in February. Uh, nobody said anything to us in relation to is uh, 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 the, in relation to their inability to operationalize the timetable uh, in March. Uh, we didn't hear anything relating to the timetable in April. And now, um, it was just yesterday that the political parties uh, appealed to the commission uh, to adjust the timetable. But as the chairman pointed out, we had already, as a commission, printed the calendar of political party primaries. Uh, in relation to these primaries, all the registered political parties have submitted the date for the conduct of their state assembly primaries, national assembly primaries, governorship primaries, and presidential primaries. And with this is the timetable uh, relating to all the political parties. Not only that, the commission also went ahead to also produce a guide that will guide the political parties in the conduct of their party primaries and in the nomination of, um, in the nomination of candidates. Now, as far as the commission is concerned, as of today, the timetable for the conduct of party primaries is sacrosanct. Uh, this is because if you look at the entire gamut of what is going on today, the conduct of prim uh, party primaries is only a minute fraction <coughs> of what the commission is doing. As you are aware, on the 18th day of June this year, we are going to conduct the Kitty governorship election. And the conduct of a governorship election is a huge enterprise, it's a huge venture. On the 16th day of July, we are going to conduct the Oshun governorship election, which is also a huge, a huge button and a huge issue. Then we have 18 outstanding by elections to conduct. And you also know that we are con con conducting the continuous voter registration exercise as of as today and meet some serious security challenges in some of the states of the Federation. So we have so much to do. 
And we have already trained our officers that are going to monitor uh, this party primaries. So changing the goalpost at this point in time uh, will not really, really be feasible. So and uh, we made our position uh, very clear to the political parties. But they said that they have a document they are going to submit to the commission. We are waiting for that document. When they submit the document, we will look at the document. But as of today, the timetable is sacrosanct, and we appeal to the political parties to proceed with their party primaries, uh, irrespective of whatever decision the commission may likely take. But right. the possibility of changing the goals, the possibility of adjusting the timetable uh, is really, really, really not there. All right, thank you, Festus Okoye. Let us bring in um, Openabo Inko Tara into the discussion. Uh, open up, you have heard um, the position of the Independent National Electoral Commission, and um, from what um, they have told us, they have um, their hands full uh, with elections in June, July, and of course, 18 by election, according to the National Commission. But let's talk about IPAC right now, the Interparty uh, you know, Advisory Council. Is it a thing of uh, they are not well prepared, or they are not, the, the parties have not put their, their houses in order? That's why they're looking at an extension, really. And not likely to hear political parties talk of extension. I, I just listened to the INEC uh, Commission on Information, and my views are in sync with it. And I'm very happy and I pray that there won't be any change. Nigerians are fastidious in nature and largely unlawful. You had enough time to prepare for your primary. Now, you have these people complaining, remonstrating simply because they're wondering as to who their successor will be. Most of the politicians have schisms in their camp as to who is going to succeed them, and they need enough time to address this issue. Now, it's more or less egocentric. They have failed to consider the domino effect, the extension of time we're going to have. The toll is going to take on the uh, INEC. We are talking about in terms of uh, finances, in terms of uh, manpower, in terms of security, and every other issue. These are all the issues that INEC has taken on advice. They insist that the timetable will stand and will remain sacrosanct. I will implore the INA Commissioner and by extension the Chairman to please ensure that there is no extension, not even by one hour, not even by one minute. He who has failed to plan has planned to fail. If they are not ready, then so be it. Any political party that is not on the ballot, so be it. I can assure the INA Commissioner that Nigerians are with them on this. You have enough time to plan. What are you waiting for? There is no excuse whatsoever. You can't talk of post you can't talk of security circumstances because you have enough time to prepare for this problem. Why are you extending it? What is the right? There is no reasonableness in that agitation, in that clamor for an extension. So may I call on INEC uh, as a body to ensure, thank God that, excuse me, on this program with the INEC Commission of Information, I call on them to insist and ensure that the dates are sacrosanct. There should never be any change whatsoever because no excuse will be tenable. And if INEC should do this, let me also give this as an advice, advice as an SD. If INEC should go ahead to do this, then INEC will be accused of being compromised. That is the truth about it. You cannot be pushed over around like that. You are a body that is supposed to be independent. And Nigerians are with you on this. Please do not extend it. The, the time to move for primary. Do not even extend the time. If you recall, even when Jonathan extended the uh, election date for the presidential election in the sky, and even when uh, uh, we are to complete when I extend it, a lot of people wore all kinds of meanings into it. As far as they were concerned, I had been compromised. Why do you want to extend the time to I can't comprehend it. I can't pass on it. You have enough time to prepare. No extension of this. Let it be sacrosanct and let us be done with this. Mm. Uh, let's also get back to Festus Okoye. What happens if the party does, I mean, you have the political parties not complying with the stipulated guideline and the regulation, meeting the timeline. Uh, what will be the implication? Well, uh, you see, this commission is a creation of the constitution and also a creation of the law. Both the constitution and the electoral act 2022 uh, gives the commission the power uh, to issue subsidiary legislation. And we have our regulations, we have our guidelines, and we have our mandates. Now, the implication is that the commission can only monitor party primaries uh, conducted between the fourth day of April 2022 and the third day of June uh, 2022. The commission will only give access code to our nomination portal 
uh, to political parties that conduct valid party primaries. So the implication is that if any political party conducts anything called primaries on the fourth day of June uh, 2022, the implication is that that particular political party did not conduct primaries and that particular political party will not have candidates uh, uh, in, in, in the election. So it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, secondly, even when we give you um, our access code uh, to our political party's nomination portal for you to upload the list and personal particulars of your nominated candidates, if you do not upload at the stipulated time and date we have given in our timetable and schedule of activities, at that particular time at 6 p.m., the portal will, will shut down and nobody can have access to the uh, portal anymore. The implication is that the political party that failed to uh, sell the portal at that point in time has no candidate in the election. It's as simple as that. These things are embedded within the confines and ambit of the Electoral Act uh, 2022 as amended. And this present commission will enforce the provisions of the Constitution and also enforce the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022. Uh, because we are a regulator and we, be, we, we must be seen uh, to be regulating uh, the activities of uh, political parties. Yes, we agree that there are new provisions in the Electoral Act 2022 uh, and both the Commission and the political parties and the, all, all the critical stakeholders are operating the Electoral Act 2022 uh, for, the, for the first time. And that accounts for the reason why if we even went out of our way to produce what we call Guide for the Conduct of 2023 Political Party Primaries and Nomination of Candidates uh, for Election. And we have given this to the various political parties as a, as a guide uh, so that everybody will know what is expected, uh, expected at this point in time. And so we are going to collaborate with the political parties. We are going to work with the political parties uh, to make sure that we realize the intendment uh, of the timetable and also in the intendment of, of the law. So I believe that the political parties should I just, as pioneers, all of us must be up and doing in making sure that we give Nigerians a very good election. All right. Uh... Obunabo, let's um, talk to you right now. I just want to you know, see the lessons to be drawn or gotten from all of this. It is really shocking. Obunabo, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, fine. Let's talk about consequences and, of course, lessons to be learned. From, from all indications, 18 political parties you know, under their advisory council came out to ask for an extension. What does this really tell of the nation's uh, uh, political space and uh, what are the lessons to be learned? Well, in terms of how largely uh, our leaders, how unlawful they are, and uh, in the sugar for the law, a lot of them believe that uh, they can have their way in anything, there, especially the money parts in politics and those in positions of authority. They have the belief that they can have their way in any situation. And uh, what are the consequences? Simple. They must have learned their lessons. If I like to insist, remain resolute. Then they will learn their lesson that uh, you don't try for certain issues. That when there is a law, you must obey by go by the law. You must abide by it and ensure that you don't fall short of it. Because the truth is, most of our politicians, especially the governors, especially the senators, they believe that uh, they have the clout financially, politically, to influence decisions. And most of them believe that uh, they have broke the law. So what they say is what will reign supreme. So if I had to insist, then they would have learned their lessons. And next time, the next uh, upcoming elections, uh, either this year or next year, or even after the next year elections, when the timetables are out, of course, they will strive to ensure that they go by that timetable and not expect a change in the date at their instance. All right, that's as much as we can take him, gentlemen. Many thanks, um, Barrister Festus Okoye, okay, National Commissioner, uh, Information and uh, Voter Education of INEC, and of course, uh, our regular our political affairs analyst, uh, Oponabo Inko Tire. Thanks for all the thoughts you, you have shared this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, uh, you have heard from INEC, you have heard from um, Nigerians and, uh, of course, um, analysts, um, you know, the consequences and, of course, the implication of all of that. I just feel that uh, the political parties should have put their houses in order because of, uh, you know, all this uh, politicking, uh, sale of forms, and, of course, uh, trying to adjust um, several sections. Uh, 
they have so many axes to grind that they have actually lost in some of the If you look at the timetable, like, uh, you know, the commissioner had mentioned earlier on, you found out that they had taken into cognizance. There's no mm. way you have a timetable without the president signing the Electoral Act. Mm. And so whatever would have happened would have been the delay, the fact that you had all of that delay going on. So mm. if these political parties were really interested, I mean, if you're complaining about the time allotted, then you should also understand that the president had taken so much time in, you know, signing yes, that yes. particular act and becoming making it, uh, uh, you know, a law at the end of the day, signing the bill, <laughs> making it an act at the end of the day. But it is what it is. Fingers crossed. We'll definitely monitor all of the developments coming through right here. And that's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast this morning. We'll return tomorrow with more interesting conversations uh, generating different reaction in different spaces. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, I am Messi Bobo. And I'm Justin Akademi. Many thanks for being a part of the show. We return again 7 a.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.